ever tried creating your very own garden or growing your own vegetable patch and then found out that most of your plants either failed to grow or they just got riddled with pests and disease? Well, the answer actually may lie within your soil. And what we think of is a really happy, healthy soil is a really happy, healthy plant. And today I'm actually going to talk to you about how you can achieve that healthy soil. Now, first things first, you need to find out what kind of soil you have. Now, the ideal ratio is what we call a perfect loam. Now, if you ever heard that word, it actually means a certain ratio. So you'd have 40% sand, 40% sort of silty peat, and then 20% clay. That is the ideal ratio of soil. That's the perfect condition. Now, there's ways of telling what kind of soil we have. First thing, have a dig. Look at the color. Now, this has been improved. You can already see, it's quite dark, lots of compost. When we first moved here, the soil was very light and sandy and there was no life. When you're actually digging the hole, it's also worth having a look at what life is in the soil. Now, you would like to see a lot of worms. When we first took on the patch, I think we found three worms in the whole of this kitchen garden site. Uh, that's pretty poor. I expect to see a dozen of worms in each spade full of soil that I dig. And what I hope to see in this hole is actually things like beetles, ants, uh, all sorts of bugs and worms. Worms are the gardener's best friend. They are the amazing recyclers of the soil. They bring the compost down into the soil, they aerate the soil, they're amazing recycling machines and you definitely want loads of those. The next thing we want to do is find out the soil structure and texture that you have. Now, first thing, when you're looking at that hole that you've dug, the first layer should be very dark and crumbly. That is the life of your soil. The next layer, we call the topsoil layer, should also be fairly fertile. And then you're going down to your subsoil and your bedrock. Now, I don't expect you to dig that far. It's only the first 30 centimeters that we're really focusing in on. Next thing is soil texture. There's a few ways of doing this. The first one is, if you get a jam jar and you fill your jam jar with soil about a fifth of the way and then fill it with water. Tie it up and shake it, let it sit for a day and then what you should find is the sand particles sink to the bottom and then you should find a silt layer and then your clay sort of organic layer. And it's quite interesting to see this because it's great to do with kids actually. And you can see what kind of textures you have in your soil. The other two methods are wet the soil again. Next thing is make a sausage. When you make the sausage, roll it into as good a sausage as you can, if you can. And then if it joins into a perfect circle and holds, Got a good clay soil. If it just falls apart, you know there's quite a lot of sand in there, which I am not having any luck trying to make that into a sausage and hold, it's just crumbling. The final way is just pick up a piece of your soil and just rub between the fingers. Now, if it feels quite sharp and sort of grain like, that's the sand. If it's quite soapy and smooth, that means you've got silt. And if it's really sticky and heavy, you've got clay. One of the final things to do is find out what kind of pH you have in the soil. Now this could really matter when you're growing things like brassicas or certain plants like acid loving plants. Now there's a few ways of doing it. You can get a soil pH testing kit, which is what we have here. And literally you would just stick it in the soil. Now this says five, so it's quite acidic. Now the pH scale, obviously the lower it goes, the more acidic, the higher, the more alkaline. So if we're looking at nine, it's very alkaline based. If we're looking at one, it's like acid. Now, I know not everyone has one of these. Now, you can get a cheaper kit for like five euros from most garden centers. They do, you know, for a one-off job, they're great. You can also have a look at what's growing around you. So if there's rhododendrons, camellias, and your hydrangeas are blue, that indicates you have acid soil. Now, if your hydrangeas are red, pinky red means you've got alkaline soil. So there are great ways of telling. 
Now, just going back to the start of what I said about working with the soil you have. Now, if you have an acidic soil, which is seven going down to three, you want to be working with plants that grow in those conditions, like your blueberries, your camellias, and rhododendrons. Now, if you have something that is seven or above, you want to be planting things like brassicas and things like elder trees who love those conditions. Now, seven is neutral. That gives you the widest range of plants to grow, but you can plant in many varieties of pH. Now that we've found out what kind of soil you have, we're going to look at how you work with that soil. And the first thing you can do is embrace it. Plant things that will love the soil conditions you have. However, if you want to look at growing a wider range of plants, then we're going to show you just how you can do that. And the first stage of any new garden or vegetable patch is to prepare the soil properly. And by doing this, I mean remove as many weed, perennial weeds, like vine weed or cooch grass as best you can, stones, and just to get a good feel for the soil. Once you have dug your soil, you want to be working in lots of organic matter. This is how you improve that structure so it can hold on to more nutrients. I've got three types that I've used here. The first one is really well rotted horse manure. The more well rotted, the better it's nice, dark and crumbly. That's the ideal. It has lots of worms and it will really help boost that soil life. The other one is compost. This is homemade compost that's been sieved. Now if you can't make your own you can obviously buy it in bulk bags and look for peat free green organic waste and there's plenty of supplies. And when you're doing it you're adding about four inches compost before you dig it in. Okay, four inches of compost on the top, dig it in. The final one which is like horticultural gold, it's leaf mould. Now this isn't at its full, fully developed stage. This is about six months. When it's broken down it is a really good crumbly texture. It will improve that soil like nothing else. So save your leaves, collect them, break them down and work them into the soil. As well as adding organic matter you can get your plants to do the soil improving for you, like these two chaps here. Now the first one I have is called Comfrey Bocking 14, I've mentioned it before. It's an amazing plant and what we do, we plant it around our heavy cropping fruiting bushes. It grows into a normal sort of little bushy perennial. When it dies back, its leaves break down around the plants onto the soil and feed all the plants around it. So it's high in potash, really good plant. The next one, it's a pioneer species. It's a nitrogen fixer. Now, this is called Spanish broom. It's just got a little flower there now. And it's full of nitrogen fixing nodules. Now that will promote lots of leafy growth. So it's ideal for planting around trees if you want them to grow really quickly. So it's a great way of working with your soil and getting the plants to do the work for you. So you've put all that work into improving your soil or working with the conditions you have. Now, the next thing is you need to look after it. You need to nurture that soil. Contrary to belief that digging over your soil will actually help improve the soil and aerate it, there's actually a better way to do it. And by mulching each autumn, no digging involved, you have got the best workers of all, the worms and the slugs. They'll actually chew up that material and take it into the soil for you and aerate it. It's the best way of getting your job done. I mentioned their autumn mulch, but uh, there's also another thing of spring mulch. Now, judging by the weather we've had of late, it's very dry. And a spring mulch basically gives us nice protection from evaporation. We want those plants to stay hydrated. So you only need anything like one to two inches really, just to keep that moisture in around your plants. Another method we use here at Toon Green Shoots to maintain our soil is green manure. Now, green manures we would sow in the autumn mainly, and they would grow over the winter, which would mean protection of our crops, and uh, George agrees. And then they would rot down and feed the soil and improve the structure. So they're a really good option to look into. We do hope you've enjoyed today's video, and just to recap what we talked about, we talked about how to find out what kind of soil you have, how to improve that soil that you've got, whether that's with organic means or working with the soil you do have. And lastly, how to maintain and nourish that soil 
By following these steps, you should have a healthy soil full of all sorts of life and thus meaning healthy plants. Now, for any other information or for anything else that we're up to, please subscribe to our video or visit us at twogreenshoots.com. So if you don't have organic matter, you can get plants to do... Oh, hello, George. Hello, George. George has joined us. <laughs>